Hey, this is Lance from Langshame. We put out a state of AI agents report earlier this fall where we asked around 600 professionals in the AI industry, what are kind of top use cases for agents? Now, one that came out as quite popular is data transformation enrichment. I wanna show a general example of this today and how it can be applied to, in this particular case, research on companies. So the general flow that I found to be really nice for enrichment style agents is something like this. Let's say I have a topic that I want to research, but at the end of the research process, I want to output some schema that I can then use to populate like a database, for example. That's a very common use case, going from kind of like open-ended research to a particular schema that can then be used downstream for some use. So it's kind of going from unstructured open-ended to a structured output. So here's a general paradigm I found that works really well for this. So you provide a topic as the user, lend the LLM, then do some planning to basically fan out into some set of search queries, do web research across those queries. Now here's a part that's kind of interesting. Produce a consolidated set of notes based upon all the web research, then take those notes and basically compress them or extract them into a final schema. That's a general flow that I found works really well for the process of going from kind of research to an output schema. And I'm gonna show a nice example of that right now called Company Researcher. So getting started with this is pretty easy. I'm in the repo now, I just cloned it. So first, just make sure you have the API key set for whatever model you wanna use. It's default configured for Anthropic, so I set my Anthropic API key and my Tavli API key. So those are set first. Now what's Tavli? So Tavli is a very nice uh, search engine that can be used for web research. Now there's other engines you can use without question. Tavli I found to be quite nice and has a generous free tier. So it's the one that I typically use when I'm building agents, but of course you don't have to. So both the LLM choice here, as well as the search engine choice could be modified if you'd like. Now to get started, all you do simply do is after cloning the repo, just run this command. This is going to spin up a local LangGraph server that runs our system. <clears throat> now, when you run that command, you'll see this open in your browser. So this is just LangGraph Studio that is running from our local deployment. Now, what's really nice here is I can open up this input tab, and this is where I can provide the name, for example, of a company I want to research. And I can optionally provide a schema and optionally any other user notes about that company that I want to incorporate in my research. The only one that's required is the company name. So let's just say Datadog as an example. And now let's say I just run this, hit submit. So what's cool about Studio is you can actually see the process of the agent running. So first it generates some search queries. Now it's performing research on the company. It streams notes from the research process, pretty cool. Now again, this research is using web search with Tavli under the hood. And we're done. Pretty neat. So again, what happened was I did my research. It basically compiled a bunch of notes from the research process, which you can see right here. Here's all my notes. And then it actually attempts to extract notes into a schema. This reflection reflects on the schema to see that all fields have been populated. And if so, deems it to be satisfactory and we end. Now you might ask a, a question here, we didn't supply a schema, so where'd it come from? Well, the agent has a default schema that it'll use and I'll show you that in the code here shortly. But the nice thing is to get started, it'll just use a default schema. So you don't have to go through the trouble of supplying one if you don't want to. You can see that default schema populates company name, founding summary, product description, and founders, as well as founding year. You can modify that any way you want though. It's just using the default. Now in Studio, if I click on this icon, I can open up the trace in Langsmith, and this will allow me to look at everything that happened under the hood. So the initial query generation phase, the research phase, the reflection phase. Now, if you want to understand what's happening under the hood, just go to the repo, go to source agent graph.py. Now this is agents built in LangGraph. And what I like to do typically when I'm starting looking at new LangGraph code, go down to the bottom where the graph itself is actually compiled. So you see this builder, and what's passed in here is the state. So this state basically contains everything the agent needs to operate. It has an input state and an output state. The input state is what the user sees. The output state is what's provided to the user on output. Now, when we're, we were in Studio, we saw basically the field specified in the input state right here. 
company extraction schema user notes. And if we go to state.py, so there you go, that's where that state comes from. Now, if we look back at Studio, we can see there's a number of different nodes in our graph, generate queries, research company, gather notes and extract schema, and reflect. All those nodes are coming from here. So basically, when you specify your graph, you supply the state, you call this add node method, and you just pass in your nodes. Now, each node is just a simple function. We can go look at those right now. Generate queries is defined up above. So all that's happening here is you take in the state. In this particular case, the state will have input from the user because I've started my graph. And you can see all we're really doing here is using structured outputs to produce, in this particular case, a set of search queries. We get those queries as a list and we return them to state. Now, if you want to look at the prompts that are being used under the hood here, you can see query writer prompt is what's specified. You can go to prompts.py and you can see the prompt is right here. Very simple. We just use string formatting to pass in everything that the prompt will need to generate some search queries. In this particular case, you're saying you're, you're researching a company, generate some number of queries. Here's the schema that you eventually want to populate. Here are any provided user notes about those companies. That's it. So the next note is research company. We can look at that. This is actually just where you're going to take those queries. We got those from state. And you're just going to kick off a web search using Tavily. That's all that's happening here. You're getting the results from search. And then you're generating some notes based upon the search results. Now, this is the interesting point here. This notes generation is not using structured outputs. It's just generating a set of notes given the schema. So you're basically supplying the schema to the model. So I'll basically show you this info prompt here. You're doing web research on a company. This schema shows the information we're interested in. So you pass the schema, tell it, hey, here's what we care about. That's totally fine. You scrape some websites. Here's the websites. Here's anything else from the user. And just write me some notes. Don't try to format the output yet. We do that later. Now, why do we do that? I found that you get better results if you first do kind of a note-taking phase, compile a bunch of notes based upon the raw research, and then you do an extraction step afterwards instead of trying to do it all in one shot. Minor point, but I found this to be a bit better in terms of producing high quality extraction results. Then we have this gather notes and extract schema. This is where we run the extraction process. So you can see this extraction prompt, go to prompts.py, you can see this. This is actually where we provide, here's all the notes you've taken, here is the schema, and actually produce a structured output that adheres to the schema. So this is the extraction step. And you can see we use a structured LM to do that. That's basically taking Claude 3.5 in our case with structured output, and we pass in the schema. That's really it. Then this info is the final structured output. That's all we do, pretty simple. The final step here is reflection. Now this is actually kind of an interesting thing that you can incorporate in graphs. So in this particular case, we pass this reflection prompt with the schema as well as the extracted object. You can see we specify the prompt here. Go and look at the prompt. So this is basically saying, hey, your research analyst reviewing the quality and completeness of extracted company information. Here is the schema. Here's what we extracted. Is it complete, basically? And this returns a binary score of yes, no, basically. And that's really all there is to it. This is just simply a conditional edge. So basically, if the result is satisfactory based upon our reflection, we return that. And importantly, we actually generate some new search queries during this reflection phase. So this is why what's kind of neat is, if it's not satisfactory, actually the agent here in this particular step will generate new queries to fill in missing information. It'll loop back then and reperform search. Now you can see that routing is done in this final conditional edge. We go from reflection and you see this 
function right here, route from reflection, we look at whether the reflecting results are satisfactory. If so, we end. If not, we go back to research. And we have now new search queries to restart the process. So that's why when we look at this overall flow reflection step, it can go back to research company with new queries, kick this off again, or it can just end. That's really all there is to it. So this is a very simple but nice agent architecture for doing open-ended research to a final extracted schema. And I found this to be very useful whenever I need to do extraction from kind of open-ended web, web research to a particular schema to populate like a database, for example. Um, this is a very useful and general architecture that can be used. So I hope this is useful. Feel free to leave any comments below. Thanks. All right, now that Lance has given us a great overview of how to use the people, the company researcher agent, I am going to jump into discussing evaluation. So in the repository, we've provided a data set and an evaluation script for running evals in Langsmith. And before we do all that, uh, make sure that you've installed the Langsmith Python package and you've exported your API keys for running the uh, LLM as a judge agent. Um, and then make sure that you run the create dataset script. Uh, once you do that, you should be able to see your dataset in Langsmith. It should be called startup data enrichment. And then you will be able to see examples that look something like this. You're going to have the input, which is just going to be the name of the company, and then the extraction schema, which is all the properties that we are trying to extract, and then the expected output. So these are all the fields that we're expected to extract, and this has been pre-populated by us uh, for the expected output. Um, all right, so now that we have all of that, let's head over to the terminal and actually run our evaluation script. All right, so now we are in the terminal. We can see that we've ran the UV command to start our LangGraph agent, and it is being hosted at the following URL. We can then go into a new tab and have run the run eval script, passing that URL where our graph is currently hosted. Once we hit enter, we should see a a progress marker perfect of the experiment starting. This experiment is going to take a while because it, our agent needs to run over every example. So while it's running, let's go and look at the eval script just to familiarize, familiarize ourselves with it. So in the eval script, we define an agent for evaluating the uh, output that our agent gives and the reference output in our data set. And the prompt is fairly simple. We're just going to look through a few categories of fields. First, numeric fields, um, which we're going to check if they're within 10% of the expected output. Um, and then we're going to have exact match fields, where we are going to try and check exact matches. And then we're going to have fuzzy match fields, such as like the description of the company, where it's going to be a sentence or two. And obviously, there's no exact wording of a sentence that's the right answer. As long as it contains the right ideas, we want to give credit to the agent. Um, and this prompt is really flexible. So if your agent outputs a different schema or doesn't use structured output at all, you can just edit this with a couple of sentences, and it should be applicable to your new agent. Uh, and then inside of the evaluator function, all we are going to do is use a structured output with a reasoning and a score key. And this reasoning key is going to help the agent use chain of thought. So it improves its performance. And then we're just going to use the with structured output uh, function from Langchain. And we are going to run the LLM uh, on that evaluation prompt and then comparing the actual output and the expected output. And then we're all, all, all we're going to do is return the score. We're not going to return the reasoning. Um, and then we also have a target function here, which is really simple. So we're using a remote graph, uh, which lets us take the graph from the URL that we are hosting it at. Uh, and one thing to note here is that our target function just needs to be a Python function that takes in inputs and then outputs uh, some output that our evaluator can accept. So while in this case we're using a remote graph, this is really flexible. And as long as you define in your Python function a call to your agent, be it uh, a LangGraph agent or not, you can still evaluate it in Langsmith the exact same. And then we actually have our, our, our function that runs the evaluation. And lastly, we have a couple of command line arguments, which you can look at yourself if you have time. All right, let's now head back to the experiments page and see the results of our experiment. Okay, fantastic. So you can see we have the YouTube video take one experiment. There are a bunch of examples and we have all of the evaluate agent scores. And if we jump into one of these examples, we can kind of see that um, 
this received a score of 0 0.8, which is really high. Um, and it did a really good job of getting the correct description for the company. It figured out that it was an AI powered medical scribe, which is exactly what uh, this company is. It correctly identified the CEO as Mike. And then it had uh, some small errors with the funding, which might be due to the fact that uh, getting private funding information is difficult. So maybe this could indicate to us that we might want to provide our agent with better APIs for uh, pulling funding information. Anyways, so that's just a brief overview of how evaluation works. Inside of the test suite in Langsmith, you can take a look at a bunch of other examples to figure out insights into ways you can improve your agent. And you can create a feedback cycle where you evaluate, iterate, evaluate, iterate, and then once you're happy with the performance, you can deploy your agent to the public. So I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction into how you can evaluate the company researcher agent.